Yo, what's going on guys? It is January 5th, 2019. Yo, what's going on guys? It's DJ Rick Webb and today we're going to be doing the second of three viral shows in the series that we're doing this winter. So guys, I filmed these two vlogs of the first two of three wedding shows we did at the beginning of January and part of February and it, it just didn't work out. So in terms of fusion sound and lighting, I booked us for three of the biggest wedding shows in both Greensboro and Winston-Salem this year. We did one on January 6th. And then we did two back-to-back -back ones, January 26th and February 2nd. So we started with the string balls. We got Oscar here. Oscar. Oscar's officially a DJ with us, if you didn't know. Hey. And like I said, I tried to do like a gig vlog of the first two shows. And after the second one, I'm like, this is just not working. Really, all we're filming is setup, teardown. It's the same setup at every single show. So I didn't even film anything for the third show. So what I'm going to do here in this video is we're going to put in some clips of the two shows I did and some walkthroughs of like what we we're using in that and I'm also going to provide you guys with some tips here on what you should do, what you shouldn't do, in my opinion. So my first tip for you guys is to come up with a game plan before you go and do your wedding show. You need to have a rock solid game plan for your wedding show. I'm talking about how you're going to interact with brides, how you're going to talk to them, how you're going to get their information, very crucial, and how you're going to basically sell them. So let's talk about the attracting phase, which is creating an attractive booth. Here's my number one tip for you guys. Do not just come to the wedding show with some marketing and advertisement material and sit down at the provided table and chairs and just do that. Don't do that. Please don't do that. That's so old school. Brides nowadays don't give, like, they'll walk right past you. They do not care unless you are a really good salesman. That's besides the point. Most of us are DJs. We're not good salesmen. So what you should bring, in my opinion, is your normal setup. You should bring your normal lighting, your normal DJ console. If you have a good console like an SZ or an SX2 or turntables or CDJs or just as long as you don't have, like, a really tiny controller, just like an SX2 I'd say is just about normal. Put that on display. You want to set up your full setup minus your speakers because you you don't need speakers. So if you got trussing totems, set up trussing totems. If you don't have trussing totems, don't set them up. If you have a facade, set up a facade. If you have a really nice controller or a CDJs net, set it up. If you don't have that, maybe consider putting a TV with some video roll of what you've done at previous events. I did a TV in 2018, I didn't do a TV for the setups in 2019, and that's because I kinda wanted to have more conversation. I didn't really, and I wanted to show them stuff versus them just looking and watching. So it's just a different strategy. Here is the biggest tip on the whole like DJ show look. Mock up your setup. Take the time, if you got a 10 by 10 booth, Figure out in your garage, in your living room, whatever, what 10 foot by 10 foot is and see what will fit in that 10 foot by 10 foot section. It is smaller than you think. Figure out what will fit in the space that you have for your booth, mock it up, and then package it up in a way that you know exactly how to put it together and you can do it very quickly. Take pictures of your mock setup that way. Um, it just takes less stress off of you the day of when you know what you're setting up and you don't have to worry about it. What's up guys? Uh, let me pause this music real quick and I will take you guys on a little bit of a tour of what we're doing here. First off, this laptop is my DJ laptop. We're actually Bluetoothing Virtual DJ over to the LD Systems Maui 5 Go in the corner. Um, so that thing is running audio. We got the foam sticks in the corner here. I gotta take some of those out. Second laptop, this one's running Show Express and we'll also have the form loaded up that they can fill out. Uh, got the Fusion Sound and Lighting Wedding Choice Award right there with the pin spot creating a cool little dramatic shadow. There's a lot going on here. So we got 12 foot high pipe and drape on the back wall there. Up lighting with pink lighting. We got uh, ADJ Mega Hex Pars. We got ADJ Element Hexes. And then we're using ADJ Mega Tripar Pluses in the two corner totems. And there's actually one behind the FSL logo that I haven't turned on yet. Two American DJ InnoSpot Pros. We got like a hundred and something string bulb lights up there using the pipe and drape again to do it. This time we went left and right. I think it looks pretty sweet. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We got the, the SZ case back here just running on standby mode. 
Got the business cards laid out. Gonna put some more stuff out here. We got the Chave Easy Gobo. Throwing the rings up on the back of the pipe and drape there. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So now that you have figured out your game plan on the attract, your setup, what's gonna look like, what's gonna do like that, you need to figure out your interaction phase. How are you going to interact with the brides, the grooms, um, the couples that are at this event, the parents that are looking for their, their uh, daughters? How are you going to interact with them? This is honestly something you need to come up with. I'm not a fan of the whole like, like hey, let me show you something. Hey, let me show you. I'm not a big fan of the whole salesy person. That's just my strategy. That's who I am. I try to be genuine about stuff. I don't like to like drag them off and try and force them into a sales pitch. The way I do it, I just I just sit there, basically. I Hey, how you doing? Smile, all that. And I let them approach me. I don't do it the other way around. That's how I do it. One thing, though, on my attract side is that my, my setup screams DJ. It screams lighting. So if that's something they're looking for, it catches their eye and they come and they want to talk to me. So once they come up to me and we start talking, the main thing I need to focus on or that you should focus on and that I focus on is letting them talk. I want them to tell me what they need so I know what to offer them. Some clients are hard. Some of them are just tell me what you get. They don't really know what they want. So you have to kind of just like leverage it into it. My main goal is to ask them, so tell me about your wedding. What's the date? Where is it located? What are you looking for? I want them to tell me what I'm going to pitch them. What am I going to sell them? I'm not going to jump into a conversation and say, oh, we offer this, 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 and this, and this, and you should get this and this. I'm not going to jump into that. I'm going to let them tell me exactly what they want, and I'm going to be like, oh, that's awesome. I have something just for you. Now, I'm, I'm holding the iPad here because this is what I always go to, and I highly recommend you have an iPad, a computer, or just pictures in general, brochures to show your clients. I use an iPad because I can flip through tons of photos left and right. So what I do is I show them photos based on what they want. So I have multiple reception packages, I show them multiple reception packages, I have different lighting things, so if they want this lighting or this lighting, I'm going to show them pictures of examples so that they can see real world examples of what I've done or better yet, what our company has done. One thing I want to stress though, and remember, this is all my opinion and what I do. Uh, you can do it differently if you wish, but I try my hardest to not give out pricing until the very end. My biggest thing in the whole talking to them portion is to explain to them the value, explain to them what they're getting and then drop the price. All right, so now we have the attract, now we have the conversation slash sell. Last thing, and this is the most important thing, and this is what I screwed up on in 2018 when I did my first bridal show on my own, getting their information. Back in 2018 when I did my first bridal show down here in North Carolina, they told me they were gonna give me this big massive pool of all the names, all the, like, all the details of every single bride that came down. I was like, great. That's all I need to rely on. I don't need any other information. I can just rely on that, wait until the end of the show, get the list, and then send out all my marketing to all the emails, start phone calling them, blah, blah, blah. Wrong. You need to have a way to collect these names, whether it's a pen and paper on a form to collect their names. You need to get their email. You need to get their phone number. That's the biggest two things right there so that you can follow up. The way I do it, I have a form. The form links right into my CRM, my client relations manager. So as soon as they fill out that form, they're already in my pipeline and I can instantly start sending them emails and sending them text messages. And like I said, we'll talk about my CRM and how it all works in that in upcoming videos. So those are the main points of your game plan that you need to figure out before the wedding show ever happens. So we developed our game plan. We have our game plan in place well before the show. Now we're coming up the week of the show. And I'm going to go to a clip I filmed going to the second show which talks about setting up the day before the event if they allow it. Alright, this is a good point to give you guys my first tip for doing wedding shows and that is to bring something. Bring a setup. You are spending money on this wedding show and people are spending money to come see you. You better have something that says I'm a DJ. Now that doesn't mean bring speakers but you could bring like your mixer, have it on display, bring lighting. Lighting is very awesome. Bring lighting. If you got lighting, bring lighting. You want to bring something. You want to have something in your booth. You want to have something cool. Uh, mock it up before you go to the show or this is something I highly recommend. Go set up the day before. 
Uh, you should always go set up the day before if it's an option. If they don't have the option, ask them if it is an option because nine times out of ten, they'll let you go set up the day before. Um, they'll basically be like, we have no security to watch your stuff, but I mean, no one's going to be in there, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but go set up the day before because you really don't need that stress the day of the show, setting up all of your stuff in the morning. You're going to be tired. You don't want to be setting up in the morning. You don't want the stress of like hurrying up to finish your setup and getting stuff out of the way. You only got like a 10 by 10 booth and you got to get all your bags and stuff out of there. It's just a pain in the ass and everyone else is doing it at the same time as you. So if you can go set up the day before like I'm doing right now, go do it because you're going to have way less stress the day of the show and way less stress when you're setting up in general. All right, now because I know you guys want to see the setup that I used, let's go to some clips showing off the setup. Okay, so we talked about game plan. We talked about setting up early. We talked about the setup I actually use so you guys get a reference for what I use. Now I wanna kinda tell you guys a little bit about some tips for during the show. Tip number one is be prepared. Make sure you got in your head what the game plan is. Do some practice talking to yourself. If you got another person in the show like with you as a partner, do your spiel back and forth to each other. Hey, how you doing? What is interesting in your wedding? Talk back and forth so that you get a little bit of fluent, you get a little bit loosened up, and you're ready to talk and have conversations. Another thing on Be Prepared is bring snacks, bring drinks. I am thankful that the wedding shows that I do, they have a completely catered meal during it. So I can literally leave at during one of the fashion shows and go have a full complete meal and fill my stomach. But these bridal shows are super long. So I highly recommend you have some sort of caffeine available and you have snacks on hand because you're gonna be standing there, you're gonna be talking for a long time, you're gonna want water, you're gonna want caffeine, and you're gonna want food. My second tip for you guys, don't take rejection personally. When you're at this show, you're gonna have people blow you off. You're gonna, you're gonna say, hey, how you doing? And people are just going to and just like run away. It's gonna happen. You're gonna have people come up to you, you're gonna say your price, they're gonna say, Whoa, that's way too much. You know how I respond to a client that says, wow, that costs a lot of money? I say, well, personally, compared to the other vendors that are at this show, I think that we are very reasonably priced. And if you go walk around and talk to some of the other DJs, you might find that my price is a little bit more attractive than theirs. Or maybe it's not. That's personally your opinion. But if you think it's too much, I highly recommend you just keep moving along. And I hope that you find a perfect DJ for your event. Now, is that too hard to say? And as soon as they walk away, I'm, hi, how you doing? Ready for the next client. You can't take rejection personally. You gotta stay upbeat, you gotta stay on your feet, and you just gotta go with it. Next tip, take big, 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 I can't stress this enough, big, big, big advantage of being at a wedding show with tons of other wedding vendors. This kind of plays into the setting up early the day before because the prior like two hours, one hour before the show starts, you can take time and walk around to the other vendors and introduce yourself. One, you are gonna make new relationships. Two, that's potentially more leads. Three, when they see you out of, out of the wedding, they remember, oh, you were at the wedding show. It's kind of a prestigious thing to be at these wedding shows. You pay a lot of money to be there. At least I did for these shows. They were $1,000 a pop. But it basically means that you're taking wedding like events serious, and it kind of like already puts you in an aspect that you are a professional. You are good at doing weddings. So go around, introduce yourself to all these other vendors, collect their business cards, very important, and don't skip out on the DJs either. I, I spend more time, actually, if not, I spend the most amount of time at wedding shows talking to other DJ vendors and getting to know them, getting contacts with them, and like back and forth because we all know we're all DJs. We don't have every date available in the book for 100 brides. You're going to get extra dates here and there, and you can swing them to that DJ. That DJ can swing it back to you. You gotta be open. It's not a competitive space. It is, but it isn't. We've all heard the phrase, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. There's a reason for that. Now, in this sense, they're not your enemies, but you gotta keep them close. You, they're, they're your competitors. Keep them closer because it, it's an ecosystem. It flows. It's weddings. I hope you understand. Last tip, tip number four here, and that is you are not going to book at the wedding show. It is very rare that I ever book a client at the wedding show. 
Nine times out of 10, it's a week, two weeks prior to the wedding show when I actually book these clients. So now let's talk about the most important thing after a wedding show, and that's, that's the portion after the wedding show, following up with all of the really high quality leads you just got. These are the ones you're gonna wanna focus heavily on. Literally the day after the wedding, send a text message, send an email, start calling phone calls, whatever your business strategy is to contact them after the wedding to basically reopen the conversation and talk about getting a contract in their hands, getting an invoice in their hands, and moving forward with the booking process. I'll probably talk about this in future videos a little bit more in depth, but just so you guys know, the day after the wedding, every one of my top clients um, I ask in my form if they would like me to text them, call them, or email them. Uh, whatever their preferred methods or all the preferred methods, I contact them that way. So if they say texting and emailing, I send them a text and I send them an email the day after the wedding. So that way I'm in front of them in two different forms. They get me in a text, they get me in an email. So it's, it's a lot more likely that they're going to see me. And you want to spend most of your energy on that main list, that main 10 to 20, because those are your more likely to book ones. But if your show gave you a master list of every bride that came to the show, uh, at least send each one of the brides that has an open date for that DJ or all of them, send them an email, like a, just a general email template. That way they have your information. But me personally, I rarely ever spend time texting any of the people on the mass list or calling any people on the mass list. I focus heavily on those 10 to 20 high quality leads that came to my booth and I talked to. Now remember in tip number three, for during the show, I talked about getting contact info, talking to all of these other vendors. You're gonna wanna do the same thing that you kinda did with your main leads and either send an email, send a text, follow these guys on Instagram, follow these guys on Facebook, follow these guys on Twitter, uh, all these other vendors. So follow all of them because the more of them you follow, the more of them they'll follow you and it creates an ecosystem of vendors that know each other, referrals basically, leads referrals, and uh, send them a text message just saying, hey, blah, blah, blah. It could be a template, honestly, and just, just a little hello, you know? It just builds that name, builds that, image it's just building your brand basically and making your brand more recognizable um, so if you do do a wedding with that vendor in the future say a, a caterer uh, you can bring it up hey I remember you from the wedding show or they'll bring it up hey I remember you at the wedding show there you go lastly here this is kind of be, going to be a little bit of a ramble on if you should do wedding shows if you should not do wedding shows etc Main thing you guys want to consider is wedding shows are not for everyone. Wedding shows in some markets tend to be very expensive. It's really hard to get out there if you're a single op. So you need to do the math. For me, I break even if I booked one wedding. So that's all I really need to do is book one wedding off of each show and I didn't lose any money basically. With that said, if you've never done a wedding show in your area, you can't really tell if wedding shows are going to work or if they're not going to work. I will say overall in a trend in the United States overall, I don't see wedding shows continuing to grow the way that they have in the past. I have personally seen in the Ohio market a heavy decline in the amount of leads and the amount of bookings that we can get off of wedding shows. I've seen other sources like Wedding Wire, The Knot, Facebook, Instagram start to rise past those. But overall, not even coming close to referrals. Referrals is by far the biggest and it's always been the biggest. So if you have never done a wedding show in your area, consider doing a wedding show, seeing if it works for you, seeing if it doesn't work for you. As you guys remember I said there, the wedding show, the exact wedding show down here in 2018 that I did, I booked zero clients off of that wedding show. I did that exact same wedding show this year, I booked five clients off of it. So. A lot of it has to do with year to year and a lot of it has to do with that game plan. That game plan that you figure out, the game plan you come into it with, that has a lot to do with it. But for any of you DJs out there, wedding shows, if you haven't done them, it's an experiment. You gotta experiment, you gotta try it out, see how they're gonna work for you, see if they're not gonna work for you, see if there's something you like, see if there's something you don't like. Me personally, back in Ohio, I had great success at wedding shows. And uh, this year in 2019, I had huge success at wedding shows and I'll probably continue to do wedding shows as a way to drum up those new leads um, 
those new clients. So with that said, guys, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts, opinions. Are you doing wedding shows? How are they working out for you? Are they not working out for you? Do you see a decline like I've been seeing, but they're still working? They're just, I've seen a slight decline lately in their success rate. So leave that down in the comment section down below. I'd love to have a great conversation with you guys and chat a little bit about wedding shows in general. So with that said, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button. If you want to be an awesome, amazing person to help support the channel, there's a link down in the description down below to the Patreon page where you can help support this channel. And with that said, guys, my name is EJ Rick Webb. Keep the record spinning, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.